Welcome to Interior Analysis. I'm Evan Westman. I'm Jelani Kelly. I'm David Jones. And today we are talking about Troy, the movie that asks and answers. Troy Barnes or Troy Bolton? Nope. Which one's better? I don't even know who the second one is. Let it burn. Let Troy burn. You don't know who Troy Bolton is? What, you liar? High School Musical? Is he the main character? Yeah, he's the Zac yeah, Efron. Efron. I mean, I know which of those two I would pick in a heartbeat. I've but I never think... seen High School Musical. You've never seen High School Musical? I've well, seen... that's our next three. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I cannot watch that baseball scene again. Ooh. It's uh, torturous. Don't they take three movies to kiss? No. Do they kiss in the second one? Yeah. And it... You know I what? the first one, too. I don't care. I, I don't... You shouldn't. It's all about Sharpay. <laughs> Oh, Ma- uh, Mashley. Ashley Tisdale's character? Yep. Okay. I mean, I think we all know that Troy Barnes from Community is better than Troy Bolton. Pause for all of the Troy Bolton stands to yell at us. Sorry for that tangent, but we're actually talking about the movie about the Trojan War. Not the Netflix documentary that's eight episodes long. Yeah, not that one. The uh, 2004 one with Brad Pitt. So, was it your guys' first time seeing it? First time hearing about it and then seeing it, yes. Yep. Hearing and seeing for you too, David? Oh, yeah. Okay, so what'd you guys think? <laughs> I will start, because I, I want to hear, I want to sit and just listen to David's thoughts. I thought it was all right. Eric Banner was Bruce Banner in Ang Lee's Hulk movie in, like, 2003. Never liked that movie. Agamemnon was Colonel Stryker in X2, X-Men United. So that's a fun superhero connection because, you know, I always got to bring up the suits. Now, I don't remember if this was based on something that happened in history or it's just a Greek myth because I remember an immortal Achilles that had the weakness in his heels because of the way his mother dipped him. I'm guessing that's this story, but the way they showed it made it seem more grounded in reality than what I remember the original myth being. So is this based on a true story or what's good with that i i don't know wow this movie it came and it went and it took a while in between and i suffered and i would say when i read your note and you said it was david benioff it all started to make sense Mm. and i was like oh yeah this feels because just a game of thrones tangent if anyone has seen the show, there's, like, the really infamous, never-aired pilot that they made, like, nine months before they filmed the pilot that we've all seen. And there's some, like, photos from it, but nothing really in footage. And that it looks awful. Like, HBO pulled it, they fired so many people from the cast, the costumes look terrible. And I was just looking at it, and I was like, hmm, this kind of looks like the pictures that I saw in, in some of the outfits, especially the Troy, the people from Troy their costumes were interesting i liked brian cox because of succession and mm-hmm. his mcdonald's commercials he makes a quarter pounder look really good even though they're trash i kept waiting and... for him to swear like Ro- logan roy <laughs> like, me too I kept especially at the in. end i thought it was gonna happen when he was like let troy burn i was like all right Achilles is as likely to fucking stab me as speak to me He's yeah oh there. my god all the times he was just get pissed at achilles yeah all of that i think the big thing and we're gonna get into it, it's one of your kind of questions that for me it at least hindered my enjoyment of the film there is a lot going on and i didn't really know who to follow what to follow how to feel and when the big epic like three hour long act three moments came and paris shoots the arrow through achilles heel i can so like imagine the 2004 theater like in a dark room them gasping and be like oh my god it is heel achilles heel but i don't know watching it alone netflix 2022 it read comical it did not hit for me (laughs) and i was just like oh no oh no 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 and then (laughs) the movie ended i feel like now it, it it does read i don't know if it didn't used to read like this but it does feel a little bit like the leo once upon a time in hollywood meme moment where it's like oh oh it's the thing it's achilles here where he's pointing at the screen yeah 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 that armor really did look cheap like that looked like it was made of plastic on both sides it was like what is that really protecting like light surface level cuts because 
Everybody got pretty easily stabbed in this movie. Yeah, it seems like sometimes it does work, and then other times, like, head-on stabs. It, I, I don't know if they were trying to be consistent about it. That did, like, there did seem to be some times where it was effective, and others where it was just like, oh, I guess no. I guess that was too good of a stab. It requires finesse and technique. So this was probably my fourth or fifth time watching this, I think. My brother hyped this up for me initially, because I think he watched it in school like his freshman year of high school so then he told me about it and i think a couple years later like my i think i was probably like 15 when i first saw that saw it and it was i think it was in like my top 20 at the time i really loved it oh boy yeah now let's into it now i think it was like one of the first r-rated movies i saw too so and like definitely one of the most at the time like it was one of the first things i had seen that like had a more complicated theme where like it didn't really come out where like there wasn't clear good guys and bad guys so i think that was why i was so into it initially and i still think that's one of its strengths but it's just it's less novel to me now Rewatching it now like i know in later viewings i was less into it um and i kind of felt like i want to like eric banna i feel like he drags this movie down a bit because i do like hector as a character but i feel like he gives like a really wooden performance as him man you wouldn't like his bruce banner then either yeah i've heard he's not great in that role from watching this yeah like it seems like he's just pretty and not uh that much of an actor his intense stare scares me he has decent intensity he just i don't know something about his line readings just they really don't work for me I'm also not huge on Orlando Bloom in a lot of cases, but I feel like he's weirdly well cast I here. I could not stand Paris. But I feel movie. like that's kind of why Orlando Bloom works, because like he's kind of good at playing like a little bit whiny and stuff. I don't know if he's trying to. I thought I recognized his face, and I was like, oh, Pirates, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I love Sean Bean as Odysseus. I was surprised he didn't get beheaded. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because, I don't know, do you know anything about the Odyssey? He has a lot more to go through. Is this before the Odyssey starts? Yeah, because he, so the Odyssey starts right after the Trojan War ends, and it's oh, like okay. his 10 years trying to get home. I was really familiar with the Odyssey because I had like an audiobook of like a, a bridge yeah, version of it as a I kid. I read it ninth grade. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I always wanted, after seeing this, I really wanted a Sean Bean odyssey movie but i don't know if you can really set that in the same universe as this because that story has so many gods and monsters involved i was in gonna it. say there's no way they could set this in the same thing yeah yeah i wouldn't mind if they just said fuck it and monsters and gods exist now but it's still sean bean like i wouldn't care Scylla and Charybdis. what is it i'm just naming some of the monsters i remember cyclops and Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love to see a good Odyssey movie. I think if we were going to have that, the time for it would have been a few years ago when they were still making, like, Greek myth movies. And like the... Clash of the Titans, Wrath of yeah, the Titans. Yeah, but, but obviously a lot better than those movies, because yes. all of them were kind of bad. I don't even remember the second one. I watched the first one a couple of times. I really don't remember Wrath of the Titans in the slightest. Yeah, I haven't seen the first one since the theater, and then I never, I never bothered with the second. Oddly, I also feel like the Greek myth movies, like an Odyssey, maybe it's been made, I don't know, but could have worked back when they were doing it. I don't remember the time period, but it was around the time they were doing stuff like the original Class of the Titans, Jason and the Argonauts, I think. Oh, was yeah, another. from the 80s. 80s, okay, with the claymation monsters. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would have been a good time to do it as well. Well, there is, I watched, I think it's from significantly later, I want to say like 97, there is a really long Odyssey movie with, like, I think it might be, like, Jim Henson Muppets. It, the monsters in it look awful. They're, like, nightmare fuel bad CGI and puppets. Oh. But I watched that because I also had to read the Odyssey in high school, and we watched that version of it. But it's it's pretty bad. Mm. I think Armand Asante is the, the guy who plays him. I have no idea what else he's in. We need a better one than that 
even if they don't keep it continuous with this, just just bring in Sean Bean because he's good. And he doesn't. He he's not. If they follow the Odyssey story, he's not supposed to die at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So or maybe cast him as someone who does die. Then. I'm trying right, to think who dies in that story who would be good for him to play. I don't. I really just remember the monsters more than anything. I remember him being a badass, pretty much. A smart mm. badass. Do we want to get into, because we're kind of already talking about it, the topic of adapting a myth? Sure. How do you guys feel about the decision to leave the gods out of this movie completely? The The way I've heard the, like, Greek gods involvement version of this story is Paris gets, like, is approached by three goddesses, Hera, Aphrodite, and Athena. And they, like, all try to bribe him to i think he has to choose which of them is the most beautiful and he gets bribed by all of them with like power i I think hera bribes him with power athena offers him like the power to like never lose a battle or something and aphrodite offers him helen who even in that version is still married to menelaus so he chooses helen and that starts the whole thing and then like the gods get involved on different sides and stuff Oof. i I say like the version i've heard because i feel like it's weird to talk about accuracy with a myth when like there's different versions of it and stuff how did you guys feel about the lack of gods and like magic in this i mean in like the world they set up i think it would be very strange if the gods existed like if Aphrodite was just, like, bopping around Troy, and she was just like, what's good, Paris? Like, I think I would be like, this is a bit out of nowhere. But at the same time, <laughs> Achilles was there, and I thought that was a bit strange. I always thought, I was like, is Achilles a real person? I just got very confused. Right. I really, it made me feel like I should have paid more attention in history or read more. I don't know. I was very, it was just all very confusing. The Greeks, confusing. They, uh, they, they had sex with each other, so... <laughs> incest and i just didn't i don't know i don't know if it would have if it would have added anything for me i think what would have added something for me is if paris died in the first act that would have been good that was one of a few deviations again from the myth that i've heard is paris does not survive menelaus does he eventually does bring helen back to sparta with him and i think agamemnon's supposed to survive too so i'm not really sure why they changed that out like i i do kind of I get, like, what the function of that duel between them is, but I'm pretty sure there's no version of the myth that has that. Jelani, what did you think of the lack of gods? I wonder, gods. I I don't think I... I had a feeling you would. (laughs) Yeah, no, I don't think I've ever heard of this movie, but I would have watched it by now if I knew that gods were in it, because my brother and I are both mythology nuts. I get that. Like, that makes it sound cooler, but, like, in this world, like, the movie you presented, like, it just would make no sense for the gods to function. Oh, no, it wouldn't, but I still want them there. That's just me. I would also have liked Gods and Chicken Little. I think that would have added (laughs) a lot, but (laughs) here we are. (laughs) Well, if they added anything to Chicken Little, just, like, good animation for one, like that. Mm -hmm. that Yeah, there were a lot of other things that needed to be added first. No, I would have taken it all just with gods. All the musical numbers with gods. Isn't that just Hercules? Pretty much. <laughs> no, that's a lot better. That's like so much more elevated. I've never seen Disney's Hercules. Anyway, nah, I, I, they should have thrown like Kratos in here or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, he would have torn up both sides and then blamed yeah, Zeus. That would have been like, <laughs> the horse, the world just opens. Yeah... I know Apollo is, I think he's supposed to be a big player in it. Because I think, I think the whole thing with Paris shooting Achilles heel is he, in the version of it where the Greek gods are involved, is like Apollo guiding his arrow. And there's also the whole thing where Achilles is supposed to be invulnerable except for his heel. Yeah, yeah. And they signal like right away in this that like, I think the kid who like wakes him up says like, they say you like can't even be touched by any sword or anything and he says well okay why am i bothering with the shield so it's signaling right away no gods no magic yeah but also like nobody is able like how is nobody able to sneak him on a you know war battlefield like that didn't make any logical sense is it just luck he just has a power of luck like master chief or just domino from deadpool 2 like he's 
never getting hit. Well, he's just good, for one thing. Yeah, but why would nobody just, like, there was a couple of times in the movie where he was in the war, on the beach, and all of that, and somebody could have just turned and just stabbed him. But I don't know if they can, because he's Achilles, and he would he would stab him first. See, I understand the argument you're making. I don't know if the movie convinced me of that. Because I know the movie's trying to convince me of that in the opening scene, and they're like, they take out their big fighters, and there's like that seven-foot bald guy, and then... Agamamama was like Achilles and then Achilles came out and then Achilles just did like an alley-oop jump stab to the neck so you're supposed to think like wow this guy can take down anyone but it just I still didn't I felt like okay it's 2004 yeah the action choreography didn't sell it as well as it could I think there's a few moments where like I'm like oh yeah okay Achilles is he's got some skills but, you know, it's not like... I think we've seen better. The quick cut action wasn't as bad as I remembered, but it, there's still, you know, it's 2004, which is pretty much peak quick cut action time. Also, again, I like David said, I understand the point you're trying to make, Evan, but, like, they also could have just shot him when he showed up alone to face Hector, where he was outside screaming Hector's name for ten minutes. That's true. Like, that's, that's, that's gotta enough. be luck. We just, like, imagine you're King Priam and the Greek's hero shows up alone outside your walls and really, like, they just went back to the other side of the beach with their tails between their legs because they couldn't get within your walls and now their hero is presenting himself to you. Nah, shoot his ass. I mean, maybe they are, are not shooting him on a matter of principle or something. Like, he, he legit said goodbye to his son, and everybody watched as Hector, Hector 1v1'd him when they could have easily right. avoided it. Like, mm-hmm. come on, bruh. I, nah. that's I have a similar complaint with Benny Off in the last season of Game of Thrones. He does that with another character, and their confrontation is the exact same way, where, like, one enemy force brings their entire thing to another enemy's walls where they can easily just be taken down and they're like standing still not moving and the enemy was very out of character just decides to let them go wow and it's like what i'm not, i was about to start watching it before i started watching all those other movies i mentioned before we started recording so i may be starting that this week i think this is also like because i didn't know that david benning i didn't know it was the same creator until i think definitely after I started Game of Thrones, maybe not even until after it finished. And now I can, like, really see the similarities. I I didn't notice the comparison until, like, I actually found out. Um, So I I hope this hasn't put you off from Game of Thrones. No, no. So I've mentioned this for the version of the myth that I've heard. How close does this match with the versions either of you have heard of the Trojan War? pretty close i haven't from what i remember i don't know a lot i remember sparta gave them a gift it was a wooden horse the people of troy liked it they brought it in they were fools they were people in the horse they then came unlocked the gates and the rest of the spartan army came in and just took out the city and that happened so it was pretty hype yeah i I thought it was kind of close except i remember there being more not only gods, but, like, creatures in it. I remember there being giants, I think. Like, oh. I remember the myth being more fantastical. And, and seeing this version made me think, again, that there's actual history and a battle like this that happened IRL at some point, really, actually. Whose side are the creatures on? I've never heard I don't remember. that. I thought they, both sides, I thought they were giants in the battle. I may be confusing this for another myth battle that happened. I remember like a David and Goliath s story in Greek mythology, and I forget their names, but that was probably a different battle. I mean, one other inaccuracy, I, well, again, it's a myth, but I, th- I feel like every version that I've heard says that it was a really long war that took 10 full years, and I don't know how you can, like, I think the summary of this on like netflix or imdb says like oh a 10-year war there's no way this is more than like five months start to end i thought it was like a week hector has a a newborn at the beginning 
who's still pretty much just a newborn at the end when mm-hmm. his wife is escaping. Like, they didn't even try convincing us that this is 10 years. I thought like two to three weeks, a month max. Yeah. Definitely no more than a season. Yeah. Yeah. Was Briseis in the original? I don't remember ever seeing that name. I've never heard of her in any mythic versions either. Maybe she was just added for Achilles to have a reason to go into Troy and get alone while searching for her. So Paris could shoot her, shoot him in, in the... Oh probably maybe because i think he's supposed to die before they sack troy in like the he's supposed to die in the war like paris yeah still shoots him but it's like while everybody else is fighting too yeah it's while the battle is still pretty even yeah because he does i know like the stuff that i've heard is he does kill hector he doesn't start fighting until patroclus dies which is supposed to be like nine years in and then yeah paris kills him but i think that's well before the sacking of troy so obviously there were some there were a lot of liberties taken why didn't paris stop shooting after he heard because it's his cousin too right versace is his yeah if she's if she's hector's cousin i would guess he's yeah brothers i would guess that uh, yeah why doesn't he stop after she says stop no he puts a good (laughs) six to seven more arrows in your boy after after she's pleading for him to stop shooting. I assumed it was just, like, blind rage, but I didn't... He did not look I never mad. got the impression that Paris was, like, that awesome of a shot. Nope. To, like, get someone right in the heel in the middle of motion while he's, like, lifting someone up. But like, he was raising her. Didn't you and see him just... practicing earlier, David, on the straw thingy? I guess. <laughs> I really guess. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that reminds me, there was another, because I think it was in preparation for reading the Odyssey in high school. Over the summer, we had to read this book called Goddess of Yesterday, which was, like, kind of about the Trojan War. It was, like, there was a lot of license taken with it. I think it was, like, from the perspective of someone, like, a, a girl who was, like, captured by Sparta as like a six-year-old and then she ended up being a servant to helen and then leaves with her when she goes with paris and it makes paris out to be like such a dick in that book as i recall he like they like stop halfway between troy and sparta on their way back and he like stabs their host or something with a spear. It was <laughs> it like went I remember that book like went out of its way to make both Helen and Paris just major assholes for some reason. But I, it's been such a long time since I read it. I, I don't know if I can speak more to it than that. But I think she also like ends up leaving because this this is another thing I remember from that myth. There's the guy that Hector gives the sword to, or not Hector. Paris gives the sword of Troy to at the end. Aeneas, I think, is his name. Yeah. And, like, I think in the book, the main character, like, falls in love with Aeneas and escapes with him at the end. Or, like, it's implied that she will. So, I don't know. That was just another, I don't know if I want to call it source of knowledge, but that's another take on this story that I've seen. Fam, just shoot Achilles at the at the gate, man. Like, what are you... The whole, all of Troy was watching that fight. And his wife was, like turned around and couldn't watch started crying as soon as the the final blow was landing it's like bruh jump him i'm i'm sorry i'm really stuck on that it's kind of fair i though. mean it's a valid point <laughs> i 100 percent agree and like in my opinion it would elevate like the script at least to give us a reason why they would believe that Sparta would give them a gift to end the war to calm Poseidon. Like, at least then it's like, oh, they lost Achilles, so they feel like they have the upper hand. So then it's like, okay, that's why the dumb king brings the horse in. But instead we just get Paris and his angst going, ban it! And then we get a cut and they're pulling the horse in. And it's just like, all right. Hector! Now we get to just burn the place down because that's just what has to happen for the rest of the movie. And now we have to kill Achilles because it's Achilles film. And this film has a confused POV, and then it's going to end. Hector! I'm going to defend the POV, but the other stuff, I, I I think maybe that's kind of the detriment of not having the Greek gods, because I think that does solve some, like, if you have 
invulnerable Achilles, then shooting him with an arrow doesn't work. But obviously that's not the case in this version. So yeah, they're really... I hadn't really considered that. Well, I guess I, I was just more on board with it. But yeah, there's no reason the Trojan archers may, aren't just shanking Achilles. Maybe they... I don't remember how his powers worked in the original, but maybe he became vulnerable once he was shot in the... No! No! Because I remember him getting shot in the, in the heel in the myth, and he died from that. Right, because I think it, uh, most of my knowledge from this is, is Percy Jackson, because he does the same oh, thing no. that Achilles does in one of those books. Okay, the books. I was like, oh no, and then you said the books, and I was like, oh okay, the books. The books are yeah, good. yeah, they don't get to that in the movies. If I remember, the way that works is, if you get stabbed, like if you get, if anything gets through to your one spot, then that's it. If anyone tries to hit you anywhere else, it doesn't work. Yeah. It, it would make more sense in some ways to do it with the mythical stuff. I still think there's benefits from keeping the gods out of it, but it does have a harder time getting where it needs to with some of that. The Hector Achilles fight comes off so much more as a grudge match. And now that I'm thinking of it, it's kind of inconsistent. Like... In a way, I guess Hector is, like, defending his honor and whatever. But, like, there should be more people protesting. Because, like, as soon as Achilles shows up, the entire, like, mood, like, everyone on the Trojan side is like, oh, man, Hector's fucked. Like, yeah, nobody expects him to yo. make it out of this fight. So, like, it would kind of like, make sense yo, just for tell Paris me. to go, like, try and shoot Achilles or something right then. Just, just tell me, you know, the last thing you See, want to tell me. That's why I feel like the POV is confused, because, like, the POV is very Achilles-driven. Like, you're supposed to feel, like, all this hype for Achilles. But, like, when you, like, like you're saying, when you actually look at the world they've built, it is then a fucked-up POV. It's, like, what? It's just inconsistent. It's confused. And I think they drag out his death for that reason. Paris really should have died against that fight with uh, Menelaus. Men Menelaus? Menelaus? Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't know which way to say it. I already disliked him for his horniness in the beginning of the movie and, like, starting the war. But when he locks the door. What? Paris, when he comes to that girl, when he comes to Helena and he just locks the door. No, no, well, yeah, well, all of that, the, everything that led up to the war to begin with, like, I, he has... I, I don't like him. I didn't like him. And then you get to that fight and it's just like... Oh boy, Menelaus, he, he should stab him, and he and he almost does, and then Hector comes in, and it's like, yo, he he was just growling at his brother's feet, and this is the guy that kills Achilles? What the fuck? I don't, I don't remember that being in the myth. Yeah, well, like I said, that fight, I think, is completely fabricated for this movie. Like, I don't think there's any basis of that ever happening. Yeah, there's a lot of one-on-ones in this that shouldn't be. Well... I know the, that Hector and Achilles are supposed to have a 1v1. Like, that that happens in the myth, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if Hector is the one who kills Patroclus, like, canonically, quote-unquote. I know Patroclus does use Achilles' armor and people think it's him, but I'm not sure who it is that kills him. I like the decision to, like, I think it, it tracks within this movie's logic to have Hector kill him, but I don't know if that was, like, I mean, apparently David Benioff didn't really care about being loyal to, like, the story as it's usually told, so I, I guess Clearly. there's some things he liked and some that he didn't. I, I don't dislike all of his choices. I just don't understand some of them. Like, I don't really get why he so badly needed to kill Menelaus. Like, I get that he doesn't have, like, Menelaus doesn't have a ton to do. I'm sorry I keep switching up how I pronounce it. I don't, I don't know how to, I don't, I forget None it. None of too. us know. <laughs> yeah. well, as many I, times as I said it, I don't remember, man. I don't feel like he has a ton to do, but also, like, you're completely changing the way the war ends by having Paris, one, survive, and two, escape with Helen. Like, that's just a completely different, like, if that's yeah. the thing you're invested in, you get a completely different ending in this movie than the one that, like, is in the story that everyone knows. So, I don't know that, like, one ending is superior to the other, but, like, why did he care so badly that 
it ends like that. I don't get it. I don't either. One thing I will defend, if we're okay to move away from the yeah. myth topic, because, David, you were talking about the point of view, and I'm going to defend the point of view a bit, because I think one thing this movie succeeds at, one of a couple things, but I think it succeeds a lot at using its identity like for what type of war it's showing to like really do a good portrayal of both sides because for one thing i don't think this really has any bias towards one side or the other i feel like it's giving you an equal amount of characters to root for and root against on both sides like with the pov thing it puts you in both sides point of view and like stays with them for a while like i think between paris and hector leaving until they get to Troy, I think it stays with them the entire time. I, I could be wrong about that. And then I think it stays with the Greeks until they get to Troy. Or with maybe like one scene in variation. But it splits its time pretty evenly there. And I think that gives us a better sense of like, okay, there's not really a definitive good side in this. I really like that they do that one because I think it's just a more nuanced way to like look at war in stories and also this is kind of a uniquely situated war to do that with because I, I feel like almost any other historical war there's still baggage of that in present day like any war the u.s is involved in like you can't make a movie about that without being aware of like how we view those events in present day and even if you go really really far back to like some wars from thousands of years ago a lot of those were based in or like motivated by religions that still exist so you kind of have to take that into consideration too like I, I just watched kind of in preparation for this i watched kingdom of heaven which is about the crusades and weirdly also stars Orlando Bloom and Brandon Gleason, which is uh, Paris and Menelaus in this movie. And I could kind of feel it still being like, okay, Christianity and Islam still exist. So we kind of have to be, and are like, it was made in 2005. So you have like the largely Christian US at that time, like invading the largely Muslim Iraq and Iran and all of that, like with the post 9-11 war on terror. Like that was happening when that movie came out. So you, you can't really make a movie about the Crusades without being aware of that. But I feel like nobody really has any baggage from the Trojan War. So you can kind of, you, you're pretty safe to do a both sides equal thing. I can't imagine anyone getting upset at the portrayals of like each side in this movie. False. I am a Trojan. Can confirm. <laughs> okay. Were you offended then? Or which side did... I do want to ask, which side did you guys take? And do you feel like there is bias? I feel like there's not. I tend to side more with the Trojans, but I don't feel like it's biased toward them. Not really. Uh, I mess with both. The, I only mess with the Greek for Achilles and Odysseus. But then I started to feel more for the Trojans when Achilles fought Hector. But now that I, I'm saying that aloud and after everything I said about how they easily could have freaking avoided Hector's death, um, I don't really care for either side. David, how about you? I feel like it's Achilles' side, Ed. Like, he's the one character that I feel just so confused by. I'm like, why is he here? Like, uh, but it's okay. <laughs> I mean, you can't make a Trojan War movie without Achilles, though. Yeah, but Wolfgang Peterson's Troy, it just, his importance to everything else just felt really irrelevant. You can't make a Trojan movie without the gods either, but they did it. Well, apparently you can. It just won't be as good. I'd say that's debatable. Because, like, I think I'm you don't... right right now, Evan, what's up? Well... Throw them hands, bro. Let me... Let me defend that position a little, because I, I I will agree that, like, taking the gods out of this comes with consequences. It does potentially make it a bit worse. But I think 
by taking them out and making it just about humans, it does make it more relevant to like, it, well, it, it, it reads as just a human conflict. So that just feels like it, we still have conflicts like this where it's, it can be over something really small, like two leaders having a dispute, but you get thousands of people involved in it and like huge amounts of people put in danger. That still is a relevant thing that this is kind of able to comment on. And I think it's less, it's less able to do that if you have Apollo guiding Paris's arrow into the one weak point in superhero Achilles. Like, it just, I mean, maybe somebody could make a really good version of that that's even better than this. Zack Snyder? Fucking A, no. Not Four Zack hours Snyder. in black and white. Let's see it. Well, Zack Snyder did 300, which is definitely the one he would rather do. 300 um, or this? Oh, this. Oh, uh, God, I don't like either. <laughs> I almost thought about doing, like, should we compare 300 to Troy? And I was like, no, I don't want to rewatch 300. <laughs> I'd rather watch 300. Well, you you enjoy Zack Snyder more than either of the two of us, so. I'm what you trying to say, this. Evan? You trying to say I enjoyed Zack Snyder more than the two of you or something? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, were you trying to hide that? Or are you are are you denying that you do? <laughs> Are you offended by my suggestion? <laughs> I mean, 300 also had, like, I think they had some weird creatures in it, right? Yeah. All the uh, Persians are, like, really weird. Plus, Xerxes is, should not have that deep of a voice. I don't think anybody should. It was freaky. And he was really tall. Like, really tall. Like, he had to be at least, like, an NBA center. And Gerald Butler yells every single line. Gerald Butler? <laughs> or is it Gerard Butler? I always forget. <laughs> it's Gerard. Okay. Same difference. I've never liked him. This is Sparta. I used to get him and Russell Crowe confused. I can see that. And I get I'm not a huge fan of either of them. Kurt Russell and Jeff Bridges confused. What's another one? I just thought of it recently, and I'm forgetting now. Anyway. Okay, so to bring it back to what we were talking about. Ethan Hawke and Kevin Bacon. Oh, I can see that. Whenever Ethan Hawke or Kevin Bacon is in something, I have to look up the cast to see which one it is, honestly. I'm sorry for shouting. Continue. It's okay. So with the idea of history being written by the winners, do you guys feel like this kind of avoids that? by both taking the gods out and, like, splitting the point of view, like it does. I'm going to let David answer. He he thinks it's uh, Achilles-centric, which is, I, I can see his point, so I'm going to let David go first. I feel like it's written by the winner slightly. I'm not going to say it's, like, a complete even balance. Like, this isn't a perfect scale 50-50. I don't think it's an atrocious split, but, I mean, it's definitely, I think, giving you that Sparta one and like that's just like the winner's one and that's just how that's gonna always go but Achilles for whatever reason I don't know if it's because of Brad Pitt's star power at the time probably what whatever it was within the actual myth but within the film Benioff wrote and Wolfgang Peterson made Achilles to me felt so just like doing his own thing and, like, that's kind of supposed to be his vibe. Like, he's like, you know, wouldn't it be cool if a king fought his own battles? Fat ass. Blah. And it's like, I see there's checks and balances on both sides. And then there's just this wild card Achilles running around. And no one seems to do anything until Paris at the very end is like, oh, I, I, I didn't get you. <laughs> and you would think, you know if this dude is a great shot he is hyped up on emotion so that could affect his shot but no you know it's the end of the movie so he has to make the shot and paris does it and that's you what know happens how difficult it probably is to hit somebody in the heel right let alone yeah. hit them to begin with yep 
And it's the person who killed your brother. So when you see him, you're like trauma, PTSD, everything. You get that perfect and shot in the heel. And you think he's attacking your cousin. Yep. But no. So you think it's biased toward Achilles or toward the Greeks then is what I'm Yeah, hearing. slightly. Probably like a 55-45, a 55-55, okay. maybe 60-40. I mean, I feel like that's about as even as you can ask for then. That's what I say. It's not atrocious. It's nothing like we're not coming in and it's definitely not 300 level with the Persians where it's like oh, you're God. supposed to yeah. feel that Persians are just like weird, terrible people that are just not humans that are creatures. But it also, but there is a slight just tinge of, all right, this is a little bit in the favor of the Greeks, but it does make sense because we as a society have been fed that tale as they have won. And I think romanticized kind of Spartan history and Spartan life. So Jelani, for your answer, do you feel like it's biased at all? Or is it like, is it doing a good, like preventing history being written by the winners? I think it's pretty balanced. Like 55, 45, like David said. So which way is the 55? De definitely the, the, the Greeks. It's more focused on Achilles than anything, I would say. But that's also because it's being played by Brad Pitt at like, was this the height of his star power? It's pretty Probably close. close off it. Yeah, because you're coming off Fight Club 7, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I think it was yep. slightly after this. I want to say it was 05. So this was like right in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah, they, they definitely threw in a few extra Brad Pitt shirtless scenes. I'm surprised this was rated R with... Like, this was really tame when it came to violence. Like, this could have easily been PG-13, but I guess not for back then. I think there's a little too much blood, but it is definitely on the tamer side of R. Uh, if that's all for the war movie topic, let's move on to the character web. So do you guys think there were too many characters in this? Nah. I, I think they focus on the right ones and think they only showed what they needed to, though I... <laughs> Again, I don't remember there being a Briseis in the original, so I don't really care for just. No offense to Rose Byrne, of course, but just, I I didn't care for any scenes he was in. David, too many characters. For me, I think it was a little bit too many. I don't want to change the myth because you know cultures have been born and died over this, and history has been taught, but. I mean, wow, it was a lot to swallow. I think if they took out Hector, took out the character Treaty of Versailles, and just kind of kept it Achilles, the two kings, and Hector, or not Hector, Paris and Helena, I think I could have grooved with it a little more. So you would have preferred a more, more focused on just a few? Yeah, just completely, just like tighter, like almost like theater casting you know or it's like you have to be as limited as possible okay so given that how do you get do you guys feel like these characters are fleshed out enough all things considered shockingly i'm gonna say yes i understood at least on a basic level where every character except i will say for rose burns treaty of versailles character i didn't understand what she was who why she was really who she was and what was going on other than the fact that she was their cousin but everybody else i felt like in any given point i understood their motivation and where they stood in the conflict of the story and i could like maneuver and understand what was going on in the scene so for a script and film where I thought that was too many characters, I do think that is an accomplished feat, that I can comprehend all of that. I was going to say they weren't, but it can't be helped, even in a three-hour movie. Now make it four hours, and about some kind of league for justice, and you have, you know, you'll have the time to flesh, flesh them out. Even though Justice League doesn't do that. I didn't say Justice League. And a clown prince of crime. Now that would make the movie better. The Joker came out of the Trojan horse. You're too late! <laughs> and then the Joker says it's Morgan time, and then he kills all of Troy. Now that David explained it, I kind of believe that a bit more, but there's just some... Like, Priam, why is he listening so hard to his advisors, advisors above everybody else, including his own sons? That's not explained. And then he's like, 
freaking out in the hall at the end. He's like, look at yourselves, you savages. And he just gets stabbed in the back and dies. And Briseis, we've said enough about her already. Hector, he... Hector really was my least favorite. He was a prince. Don't take that away from him, David. He was a prince. I feel like Hector is maybe my favorite, but I also, like, like I said, I don't like Eric Bana's performance, so I think he does sell him short. I I think with a better actor, I would love Hector in this. As it is, I, I like his construction. I, I, well, okay, maybe it's just that, like, I feel like I side with him the most. He's one of the few characters who's, like, actually taking his, like, ego out of the equation and is just like, nope not for to his death Troy. scene he wasn't that's i'll give you that but i think prior to that and we kind of talked about how maybe they kind of forced that in so i want to maybe give that a pass but i i think up to that point like he's defending troy in all cases except when it comes to paris he's got the one person he'll abandon his other values for so if eric banna did a better job in the role then you'd be on the eric banna wagon well it wouldn't be the eric banna wagon because it would be somebody else and the banna wagon i'm very much not on the banna wagon evan you heard it here first in this podcast episode eric evan is very much on the banner wagon i definitely am not on the banner wagon he's a banner wagoner to answer my question i posed i do think that they're pretty well fleshed out i think with less characters this would be more boring because nobody really changes in this but i, I want to put a pin in that because i think they kind of try to do that with achilles and Briseis, but we'll get to that in a minute for everyone else, it's just they're showing you who these characters are from the beginning. They don't really change how they approach every situation, and we're just going to have all of these ideologies clash. And I think that might be where this movie succeeds the most. I think with a lot of things, if you have really static characters like this, it can feel really flat because nobody's changing. But because there's enough of them, and they're favoring a lot of them fairly evenly, you can still make an interesting conflict by just having a lot of different viewpoints represented. I think that is a success of this movie. I think it does a good job creating a big spread of characters that have like different identities in a couple of areas. First of all, we get a good balance of Trojans and Greeks, and we get a good balance of, like, well... That's not entirely true. I was going to say we get a good balance of soldiers and, like, commanders, I guess, or, like, kings. That's not entirely true. We pretty much only have the big players in this. But there's a little bit of representation across the, like, levels of, like, the chain of command, where we have, obviously, a lot of king characters, a couple of soldiers, like, more so on the Greek side with um, Patroclus and then Achilles' other guy, Eudorus. And then we kind of have, like, an innocent civilian in Perseus, so I feel like that maybe was the instinct to include her. And there's also a good balance of, like, you have a good spread of people's views on the gods and how much they need to be respected. I kind of like how they manage that. That also feels very Game of Thrones, where some people are very heavily invested in their devotion to one set of gods or the other, and then some characters just really don't give a shit it kind of feels like in both this and game of thrones david benioff seems to be siding more with like the atheists of the group like especially achilles in this i feel like that's somewhere that it favors him a lot he's like yeah i desecrated your god's temple what's he gonna do huh no character can really refute him on that troy does not have a dancing toby mcguire but it has sean bean being cool the fact that I watched something and that I can say I have watched something that Sean Bean lists the beginning to end, just for that alone, it was worth it. And he, this is one of the best Sean Bean characters, I think. Odysseus is fucking Evan, badass. He has in like this two movie. scenes. He's so good, though. I don't even remember seeing him fight. He doesn't. Him running he at fights the a end. little bit. He fights a bit in the big face off in front of the walls. He um, is used it, as Achilles a message. 
to convince Achilles to fight in two scenes. I don't remember him ever being badass. That's what makes him badass. He's he's the smartest guy in every room. Yeah, but then he also... No, no, because then he also was like... Achilles was like, why do you fight for him? He was just like, to protect my own kingdom because I'm too scared. That's pretty much what he said. No, that's smart. <laughs> Cowardice. He's a coward. Disagree. Disagree so hard. And then in the Odyssey, then he gets his own character arc. I, I feel like Hector has enviable nobility... Odysseus has enviable intelligence in this movie. They're my two favorites. Don't confuse intelligence with cowardice, dear boy. I I don't think I am. No, you are. David, can you break the tie on this? From what I saw of him, and I must agree with Jelani there, it was very little. But he seemed alright. Okay. Very middle ground of you, David, thank you. I suppose that's a safe choice. Perhaps wise. Like Odysseus. Ha! I win. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> not how arguments work you, you just got dissiest <laughs> <laughs> we're at the end of all the topics guys thank you so much for listening well okay there's one more thing i wanted to bring up which is the inclusion of briseis and like them trying to do an arc for achilles because we've all brought up none of us has ever heard of briseis from other things I think there's a purpose in including her. They're trying to, like, very explicitly, they're trying to give Achilles something other than war. They're kind of doing the, like, arc with him where he almost defects but then doesn't. And in some cases, like, I like those kinds of arcs. Like, that's kind of what I love about Casino Royale. Like, that Bond has that kind of arc. I I don't think it works as well here. Do we think it would have been better to cut that out? I mean, for me... Not to harp on that moment that we've all talked about, but I really think it just comes down to placement. Like, when he survived the whole ordeal with Hector and just being, like, at the behest of Troy's power and they don't do anything, for him to just die a couple of minutes later, it just feels really antiquated. When, like, if we just shimmied around a few scenes, like... Because I agree, I felt that vibe where it was... He was now getting tested. Where was his loyalty lying? And was he going to die for love and all of this? And I don't think it works quite as well just because of the arrangement of the scenes. Yeah. Like, imagine he got shot in his Achilles at the wall. And, like, she could be on the wall. She could be like, Achilles! Paris! And then that would make more sense just for all of the characters involved because they're not letting him in the wall. And they're definitely not letting Briseis sway their judgment of killing the Greeks' best warrior. And then you could still have the the whole Trojan horse thing. And then kill Paris there, so then you'd keep true to the myth. Yes, please kill Paris. So it sounds like if we were gonna do this, all of us would have some kind of rewrites. Do we want to run through real quick how we would each rewrite this? Kill Paris. (laughs) Scene one, kill Paris. (laughs) Remove Perseus have Achilles die at the wall. You have to have him kill Hector, though. Have him kill Hector in... Like, he saved him and he spared him in that in that one room that he snuck whole, Hector's whole team in. Kill him there. I think that's too early. Because you have to have Patroclus die first. See, I would do it. And I would have Patroclus die on the beach before that. Mm-hmm. The movie could be shorter than it is. I would keep Patrick's death there because he has to go meet with Spongebob. But then what I would really change is like, I would have that wall scene, have him kill Hector and then like have some suspense build up where it's like, okay, clearly the sides have agreed to let this be a respectful duel, but Paris doesn't like this. Paris is going to protect his brother. So like, let this kind of be like a ticking time bomb. So it's like, Boom, we kill Hector. Ah, cool. Achilles, Achilles, pow, into the heel. Oh my god, betrayal. Paris! And then they can, like, have this whole thing. He's the prince now. He's like, what? You're going against the family? Throw her in prison. Then have the whole resolution of it's like, oh, you killed our greatest warrior. We we love you, Troy. Take this horse. Oh my god. And then have that whole sequence. Have them break her out and then have her kill Paris. And then I would end the film. David saved the movie 
but I'd still rather watch Spider-Man because this movie doesn't have gods in it, and Spider-Man has Green Goblin. I think my heart died just a little bit right there. <laughs> just a little bit. I, just I'm imagine not su- a piece of Evan's heart falling off. And... I'm not so enamored with this movie that it hurts that much, but that's some low praise right there. Or we can rebuild this city. <laughs> think of what we can create, Hector. You choose, Spider-Man. I, yeah, so another quick fix. Keep the entire film the same. Recast Achilles as Willem Dafoe. <laughs> and then recast Helena as Danny DeVito. Keep the entire film the same. Those are the two changes. Just casting changes. Wait, who's Danny DeVito? Uh, Danny DeVito is Helena. <laughs> Paris, my love. We gotta get out of the city of Troy. <laughs> All right. My rewrite has more Odysseus. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I, I recast Hector as somebody better. Like Ethan Hawke bacon? Uh, yeah, let's let's do Ethan Hawke as Hector. He, he'd be a good Hector. That's not who I said. Uh, well, I'm not casting Kevin Bacon. I don't, I'd much prefer Ethan Hawke there. Especially that time, because that's like how far after before sunrise? Same year as before sunset. Yeah, that works. I think, yeah, Paris, I, I think I would just stick with some of the myth stuff that they keep like i don't know if i want to get rid of the hector or the paris menelaus duel because i kind of like that but definitely don't have menelaus die there you could still have the same beat and he just survives the menelaus to do what uh to menelaus to um be a little more faithful to the source no there was a pun with his name yes i know i i, I was trying to follow it up i don't, I don't know, know you how it. you made it worse I was hoping someone would bring up Beyonce Renaissance. Men ain't shit, right, ladies? I don't know that song. I don't know. What, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> that was great. We'll keep that in. Right. Is is that not a song? Uh, not really. But it's her general vibe. She only like she all of her dancers are women. She tries to get an orchestra of all women. Who runs the world? Girls. Sing the ladies. Yeah. I figured it was a song. Okay. I guess last rewrite I would do, probably have Agamemnon swear more just to just for the Logan Roy fan service. It was a rated R movie, and I'm surprised nobody dropped any sort of anything in the... Yeah. I was so ready for the let it fucking burn, because it's rated R. But no. Achilles makes a deal with the Trojans and I have to uh, abide by it. Good damn it! Rated R for reasonable language. Fuck off, Odysseus. <laughs> That's my best Logan Roy I can do. All right, do we have anything else we want to go into? Hector! With this? It's like, I don't know if you're timing it that well, Jelani, but you're really <laughs> killing it. <laughs> <laughs> I can edit it to make it sound I don't know what better timing would sound like but I can mess around with it I couldn't take that scene seriously like as Hector's saying goodbye because in the background you still hear Brad Pitt screaming Hector's name at the top of his lungs like how goofy was that it is a little melodramatic anyway, boiling pasta boiling pasta so our next episodes, we've decided, came up with a long list before recording, but we ultimately landed on, we're going to do the Dark Knight trilogy, the Nolan ones. I've never fully seen any of them. I thought you said you've seen all of Rises just a long time ago. I'm surprised you haven't seen all of the Dark Knight. I don't remember anything from Rises. I think there was like a really horrible death scene I keep hearing about in Rises. Or was it Dark Knight? Probably Rises. Okay. Is it Marion Cotillard's, um, spoiler, but Talia al Ghul, her death? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't remember that, but then I, when I rewatched it, like, a week ago, <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, Would I've you, never but seen But that one it. has Bane, so I've, that's why I love it. Never, it's not comic accurate, Bane. I've never yeah. seen anything from Batman Begins. I've seen the least from Batman Begins. I think Scarecrow? Mm-hmm. Is yeah. he... Robert Fisher, the dude mm-hmm. that gets incepted. Yeah, that guy. I, mm-hmm. I feel like I just saw him in something else recently. Quiet Place 2, maybe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was... No, Lee Abbott is the main... That was John Krasinski. He was Emmett. Emmett, I think. 
Yeah, I've never seen anything from Batman Begins. I don't even know what the scare. I don't. Does he wear? Don't tell me if he wears the mask. I I hope he wears the mask at some point. Everyone uh, wears the mask in those okay. movies. Okay. Right. Evan. God, the no. identity <laughs> of the trap <laughs> I hate so much. It's a mystery. That's not... I'm going to be doing so many Bane impressions when we get to Bane, rise. I'm pretty sure Bane is comically Hispanic. Yes. No, not uh, comically. You know what I mean. Like, yeah, I understand. Understand. In the I comics. Understand. Yeah, in the comics. Not he's, fun he's not supposed to be funny. Because he's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's very... Yeah, he's like a luchador. He's a wrestler. And then he gets juiced up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and Tom Hardy was not that. He was a terrorist. I don't think Bane is a super terrorist in the comics. He did break Batman's back, but, like, I don't... He doesn't even get big, I remember... Like, he just has his arms out. Yeah, he's he's just, like, a big dude. But he's not, like, pumped with any of, like, the venom that's, like, making him gigantic. Right. I wonder how Reeves is going to handle... Because they already hinted that Venom's already in his universe. I wonder how Reeves is going to handle Bane. There's some really good villains they could do for that. But, anyway, that's a whole other topic. Batman next, next like, three episodes, I think. So, you came back nope. to die nope. with your city. No, I came back to stop you. Okay, so... Well, he can just whole... do the whole movie. <laughs> I, get, I know most of Bane's quotes by heart. So, Willem Dafoe is Bane. What are we thinking? No, no, that's disgraceful. I was born in the darkness. I would take a Willem... The foe Mad Hatter, though. He would be a good Mad Hatter. Or, or Zaz. He would be a great Zaz. Yeah. I got All the cuts on him. I got a cut for every kill I've had in my life. <laughs> he he kind of sounds like the Emperor, doesn't he? Yeah. Little, well, yeah. Similar voice. Norman's on sabbatical, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Peter, the science award. That's terrific. I this mix up is throwing me for a loop. Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, boiler, boiler. We were long so teaser, close. long teaser to the <laughs> to the next few episodes. There's going to be so many tangents. Oh, so much Bane. I'm excited for all of the Bane. And all we're right. each leading an episode for yep. the Dark Knight trilogy, so that'll be fun. Yeah, Jelani's leading begins, David's leading the Dark Knight, and now I'm leading Rises. Oh boy, I, I really oh just, boy. Evan is not narrating in vain for every note he has for that. Oh, I've already got some stuff ready. Oh, God damn it. I honestly <laughs> won't be surprised if it starts way before Rises. Like, no, it will. It, it, oh, it I will. Don't, I promise you it will. We're not even talking. We, we haven't even started any of those episodes and Evan has already began. I mean, I, I'm probably going to be doing other impressions during the first two for stuff, but I, I'm, I'm probably going to do them mostly vain. Uh... In other news, you can check out our YouTube channel. We have our video on the Spider-Man and other videos up there. Uh, our Patreon's $1 a month. Bonus episodes on there. We have merch on Zazzle. Our logo's by Kelsey Hendry. The show is on Twitter at INTAnalysis18. I'm on Twitter at Ev underscore Wes. And where are both of you? I'm on Twitter at Jelani T. Kelly, though I'm considering deleting Twitter soon. It's, it's just not good. Instagram at Jelani T. Kelly, YouTube, Base Phoenix. And I really hope I enjoy these Batman movies. I really hope I do. I do too. And I'm inside a wooden horse that Sparta gave Troy. <laughs> Waiting for night to fall. Listening to Church Girl off the hit album renaissance by beyonce Knowles carter am i right ladies is that an is that the new one what's the new one that is the new album yeah okay i gotta listen to that i heard it was good all right well thank you guys for listening and we will see you next time peace